A long time ago, in a small little town, there lived an old toy maker named Geppetto. He was a toy maker who carved wooden toys to sell to the townsfolk. He loved blessing children, but was sad that he never had a family of his own. He often wished he would still have a son someday. And one day, what a perfect as he piece was of walking wood. in the woods, with this, I will be able he to carve saw the a beautiful perfect puppet. log for his next toy project. Geppetto took the log on his back and carried it to his workshop. He put the log on his table and started to carve. But as he was carving, he heard a little voice coming from the log. <laughs> Geppetto was surprised and thought he must have been hearing voices from the children in the town. Geppetto kept on carving, but then he heard the same voice again. I must be getting really old. Hello? Hello? I'm hearing voices. Geppetto kept on working, carving one piece at a time. First, he finished the head. Then his body, his arms, and his legs and feet. Geppetto finally finished the puppet, set him on a chair, and started to tidy up his workshop. But then, he heard the voice again. Hello? Hello? Geppetto looked around, stunned. Ah, uh, him hello? But he could not see anybody else than the wooden puppet. So he kept on with his work. And then the new puppet started to move. He jumped down from the chair and started dancing in the room. Geppetto couldn't <laughs> believe his eyes. Of course, it wasn't a real kid. But it sure laughed, talked, and played like one. You! My puppet! You're, uh, dancing. <laughs> oh. Geppetto held the puppet in his arms. From now on, your name shall be Pinocchio, my child. Geppetto was so happy to have Pinocchio there, and he began to teach him about being a boy. After the summer was over, it was time for Pinocchio to go to school. But Geppetto did not have the money to buy Pinocchio his school supplies. So he sold his coat and gave the money to Pinocchio for buying school books. Pinocchio took the money and joyfully walked through the town, watching all the people in the marketplace and the shops along the way. At the edge of town, he saw a big crowd that had gathered for the circus. To find out what was going on, he walked through the crowd. It wasn't hard, because he was so short, the people didn't notice he was made of wood and just assumed he was a real boy. Pinocchio saw the huge circus tent, with a clown in front calling out to the crowd to come see his show. Come one, come all, see the amazing circus. Pinocchio thought it sounded like fun, so he went up to the clown. But the clown stopped him and said, Hey, you can't go to the show. You gotta have the dough. You gotta have money for the ticket. Pinocchio thought for a while and remembered the money Geppetto gave him for school. Hmm, I have money. He took the money out of his pocket uh, and gave well, it to the clown. Yeah, do. Inside the tent, Pinocchio saw a large stage with a puppet show. He thought perhaps those puppets were alive too. Hey, what in toys? What are you playing? Jumping on the stage, Pinocchio started to dance amongst the puppets. But since he wasn't part of the show, the crowd thought he was just a boy messing up the story. But the puppet master, above the stage, could see that he was wooden. He was shocked to see a puppet without strings. Ah, a puppet out of strings would make me a lot of money. <laughs> And as soon as the show was over, he caught Pinocchio and put him in a cage. Pinocchio was very upset that he did not listen to Geppetto to use the money for school books and to go to school. (laughs) 
Seeing how regretful Pinocchio was, a fairy appeared right next to him. Who are you? I'm the one that brought you to life for Geppetto. You should have done what your father told you to do. I am glad you know that you were wrong to disobey. So I have decided to save you from this cage. Thank you, Miss Fairy. Can you help me go to school? The fairy cast a spell, and money appeared in Pinocchio's hand. Go straight to school. Do not waste this money. The fairy took Pinocchio out of the circus. Pinocchio was on his way to school once again and began to sing along the way. Hearing the singing, a shifty fox and his friend, the cat, stepped out in front of Pinocchio. They saw the money, and they wanted to trick Pinocchio to take his money away. Hello there. Where are you going so musically? I'm gonna go buy some school books. This won't be enough money for school books, but I know a way you can grow more money. What do you want me to do? There's a magic field nearby. Give me the money and I'll plant it so you can have a money tree and pick new money whenever you need it. <laughs> Pinocchio wasn't very old and he believed anything the fox had said and gave away his money. The fox and the cat quickly snatched the money and ran away. Pinocchio was left all alone and started to wonder if he had been tricked. And then the fairy appeared again. Why aren't you still at school? Did you get the school books with the money I gave you? The fairy knew that he had given his money away to the fox. Um, yeah. And she warned Pinocchio. Don't lie to me, Pinocchio. Tell me the truth. Um. Pinocchio did not listen to the fairy and chose to lie about the um, money. But I bought for books, but I left them at school. As soon as Pinocchio finished his sentence, his nose started to grow. Are you telling the truth? As he told more lies, Pinocchio's nose kept growing longer and longer until it was so long he couldn't even move his head very well. Finally, he realized his nose was growing because he was lying. Ah! Ah! My nose! What's going on? He told the fairy the truth and she was pleased that he chose the right thing. So she used her magic wand and changed his nose back to the right size. I am forgiving you because you told the truth. The fairy used her wand again to make more money and once again warned Pinocchio not to waste any more of his money. Do not waste this money. Holding the money in his hand, Pinocchio started walking towards town again. But when he got into town, he ran into the mean puppet master from the circus. The puppet master was very upset that Pinocchio had escaped and thought it would be best if Pinocchio disappeared. So he caught Pinocchio and threw him into the sea. Wah! But when Pinocchio fell into the sea, he did not sink. He stayed afloat on the water because he was made of wood. Oh, I float. Pinocchio really liked this feeling and started to play and swim in the water. Whee. He played so long that suddenly he heard a splash and everything went dark. Hey, what's going on? Where am I? Pinocchio suddenly found himself in a dark place. He looked around but could not see a way out. Pinocchio had been swallowed by a giant fish, and now he was sitting right in the middle of his stomach. Back at home, Geppetto was worried about Pinocchio, and he went out to search for him. Eventually, he came to the far side of the town where the seashore was. He asked the fishermen whether they had seen his son or not. One of the fishermen remembered seeing Pinocchio swimming in the water. Have you seen my son, about this tall, made of wood? Geppetto asked the fisherman for help. Oh, whoa. Oh, 
my. Knowing how good a person Geppetto was, the fishermen wanted to help him, so they gave him a small boat to save Pinocchio. Geppetto jumped on the boat and sailed to the sea. But then it started to rain more and more. Geppetto was in a storm. The small boat couldn't handle the big waves and sunk beneath the water. <laughs> Geppetto found himself in the middle of the sea. <laughs> Geppetto could not swim above the giant waves and sank deeper and deeper into the water. But then, a giant fish came. It was the fish that had swallowed Pinocchio. And it also swallowed up Geppetto. Geppetto slid down the fish's throat right into his stomach. And then he heard the crying voice of a child. He recognized the voice right away. Pinocchio! Pinocchio, my son! I finally found you! Hearing his father's voice, I was so worried. Pinocchio hugged Geppetto. I'm so sorry I didn't listen to you, Daddy. I will always try to do what you say. The fairy heard Pinocchio say he was sorry and appeared inside the fish to rescue them. She used a magic bubble to take Geppetto and Pinocchio out of the fish's belly and they floated back to the shore. Pinocchio had become much wiser after all this and from then on, he always listened to his father. He went to school every day and always came home right away to help his father in his workshop. The fairy saw what a nice boy Pinocchio had become and decided to give him a special gift. One night, when Pinocchio was sleeping, she came next to his bed and used her magic wand. In the morning, Pinocchio woke up to get ready for school, and as he was getting out of bed, he realized that something was different. He saw his hands and legs and feet. He was shocked. He was not made of wood anymore. He was a normal boy, no longer made of wood. He jumped from his bed and joyfully ran next to his father. Daddy, 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 look at me! Seeing Pinocchio as a real boy made Geppetto very happy. Oh, my son, you're a real boy now! Pinocchio! Father and son hugged each other with tears of joy. Pinocchio always told the truth, and his nose never grew long again. Be